Hi and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through some general features of the Uranus equation, a few reminders, things that you get in the exam, things that you don't, so that you can make some nice good progress and you're aware of the two main things you can calculate using these equations. So our focus is going to be on the activation energy and our pre-exponential factor A. In the exam remember that you're going to have the data sheet and so you're going to have both of these on the data sheet in the exam. So please don't learn the structure of the equations. Now, if you like maths, if you're good with natural logs, I don't know why that's actually like quite a funny thing, but if you, if you do like maths, uh, then you, hopefully you'll recognize these here. So you've got an exponential term just here. Uh, K is your rate constant, so you should be familiar with that. The reason of the origin of this equation, for example, is if we were to plot a graph of K versus temperature, we would find that there's an exponential relationship just there. I know it's an excellent graph. It goes back on itself. It's brilliant. Um, then you would find that this exponential relationship means at high temperatures, it's a completely useless graph. It's not really something we can do much with. And so if you take a natural log of both sides of this equation, you end up with a much more manageable version of the equation, which gives us some interesting properties that I'll get to. So what have we actually got in here? A reminder that this is our rate constant. Okay, um, A just here, as I mentioned down there, is the pre-exponential factor, but you may also hear this called the frequency factor. Over here, you've then got this exponential term just here. So look for this on your calculator. It's probably going to be the shift of the LN or the shift of the LUN button, I'll call it. Now here, what you can see is we've got activation energy, the gas constant R, which remember for chemistry is 8.314 for OCR A, and temperature here is in Kelvin, and that's of the reaction itself. Now this here is the number of molecules that have energy greater than or equal to the activation energy. And so you can see combining that with the frequency factor tells us a lot about the rate of a chemical reaction. Now to get rid of the exponential and to stop this graph uh, being something that's quite useless to us at the moment, you can take a natural log of both sides here. And so you'll see we've now got ln of k equals minus Ea divided by Rt, which is now no longer in this exponential, add ln of a. Now what I've done again here is I've taken this term and I've expanded it. So I've now got minus Ea divided by R times one over T. Now this version of the equation, you won't be given in the exam. So I suppose you do have to memorize how to do that bit. The important thing about this equation is we've now actually got Y equals M times X plus C. So now going from a graph that really didn't help us with anything. We've now got the equation for a straight line. And so here we can plot a straight line graph. So what we're going to do, we're going to need to convert most of the time our k data into ln of k data. And that's going to go on our y axis just here. This scale is going to look a bit weird. You're going to have like minus four going down to say minus 12. So your scale goes downwards and that can make plotting the points a little difficult. Some people might like to prefer to take this x axis, x -axis and do it across the top. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to keep it here for now, though, just to try and pitch this for anyone who's a non-mathematician. Now, across the bottom here, across our x-axis, you're going to have 1 over temperature, which most of the time will be times 10 to the power of minus 3. And if you put that inside your like descriptor here, your label for our axes, then you don't actually need to put this for every number. So you can have values like 1.2 and 1.60 just here. Don't forget that that's there, though, because then when you're doing the gradient, surely that's going to be a problem if you forget about that. Now, if you plot your points on here, you are going to actually get a straight line. So I'm going to draw the straight line first because I don't want this to look wrong. But look, the points are all on the straight line. Aha. So we've got our straight line graph like this. Now, our gradient of this is going to be our m just here. And so if you calculate the gradient of this by doing dy by dx, so our change in y divided by our change in x, you're going to get this as your gradient value. Then what can you do? Well, take m times it by the gas constant R, 8.314, as we mentioned earlier. And this is going to give you the activation energy. Don't worry too much about the arranging of this equation to get rid of this minus just here and take it into the fact you'd also have a negative gradient. It does work out to give you a positive value for the activation energy. But to be quite honest with you, this isn't a maths exam. It's a chemistry exam. So please make sure you just take your gradient times it by R and whatever the answer is, quote it as a positive figure and that's your activation energy. A problem you might find when you come back to revise this is you'll do one of these and you'll get a very big number here and potentially have a bit of a freak out. Remember that this number is going to be joules per mole. So it is going to look bigger than normal. Divide it by a thousand and you normally get a number between say 50 and 200 kilojoules per mole, which seems a bit more normal. 
So we've just figured out how we can use our gradient from plotting this graph to calculate the activation energy. What else can we do? Well, I did mention we wanted to look at this frequency factor over here, this pre-exponential factor. Now, it looks nice and simple. All we need to do is find the intercept at the y-axis. Unfortunately, that's not going to be something we can do with this data because as you can see here, my x-axis doesn't start at zero. And so I can't just do that. That won't work. So what I need to do is a little bit of rearrangement. At the moment, I've got y equals mx plus c. All I need to do is y minus mx equals c. And then I choose a coordinate, let's say this one just here, and I input the y and x values for this coordinate and the gradient I've just calculated, which is minus ea divided by r. And if I put all of these bits of data into here, I will get a value for c. Most of these values for C come out anywhere from 25 to about 30. So if you're getting a number like that, that's perfectly normal. And I'd still give it to three sig fig, like 25.4 or 30.1. Now then, what does that actually give you? Well, C, remember, is actually ln of A. And so you need to do the inverse function of the natural log, which is an exponential. So you need to do exponential of ln of A, and it will give you an A quantity. That A quantity is really easy to spot because you're going to get a number that's going to be like times 10 to the power of 10 or times 10 to the power of 11, which is normal really because it's the number of collisions. And so you'd expect that to be a big value for a chemical reaction. Hopefully that shows you what you can do from this slightly adjusted version of the Arrhenius equation that you're going to get in the exam on the data sheet to calculate the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor A. So these are all skills you need to be able to do before going into your physical chemistry exam. I'll leave you to the rest of the A-level chemistry playlist then, and until next time, happy revising.